What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight... Tonight! <laughs> okay, uh, making his debut on the channel tonight. Tonight! <laughs> we have the, dr the the current drummer for Styx. Uh, we have Todd Suckerman. Yes, indeed, how about that? Todd Suckerman making his debut on the channel. Before we go any further, for those of you who are feeling inclined to doing all the clicks and the likes and the bibbity boobity bop, do me a favor, before you do all that stuff, please watch the whole video first, okay? Give me a chance to actually earn those clicks and likes. Now, after the video's done, if you still feel like doing all those clicks and likes, then by all means, Feel free to click away. This comes as a request from Charles B. And this is actually one of Charles B's three prioritized requests for the month of August for being a gold tier member on the Patreon page. So here you go, Charles. Hope you enjoy the show, man. Uh, Charles want to see me react to this is Todd Suckerman hears Rope by the Foo Fighters for the first time and then attempts to play it on the drums. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> no, have I heard the song before? Yes, uh, full disclosure, yes I have. I've done a reaction to the song Rope by the Foo Fighters before. It's over here somewhere on the channel. I don't know exactly where it is, but it's around here somewhere. I'm sure you can find it if you look for it. Um, so yes, I am familiar with the song. So I will not be reacting to, evaluating, or scoring the song itself in any way, shape, or form. I am only going to be reacting to, evaluating, and scoring how Todd Suckerman plays the song on the drums after just hearing it one time. So this should be interesting. I think we're gonna have a good time with this. I am very well of who, of who Todd Suckerman is. Uh, he is currently the drummer for Styx. He took over uh, the drumming position for Styx after, after John passed away, um, their original drummer. He passed away in 19... 95 or 96 don't remember the year it was one of those it was either 95 or 96 when john passed away um so i know he's been the drummer for them ever since and he is a phenomenal drummer uh very well respected in the rock community so i'm, I'm very familiar with todd Zuckerman. um let's see as always Charles has given us the intro. Uh, let's see. Last year, you reacted to Larnell Lewis on the Drumio YouTube channel playing the drums on Metallica's Enter Sandman after hearing it for the very first time. Yes, I did, and I had a great time doing it. This time, you'll be reacting to Todd Zuckerman doing the same thing, but for Rope by the Foo Fighters. This ought to be interesting. Uh, Todd Zuckerman came to fame after joining the prog rock band Styx as their drummer in 1995. Okay, so it was 95 when John passed away. Having more than 2,000 rock shows under his belt, Todd Zuckerman is considered one of the greatest rock drummers in the business. Uh, I don't know if I would say one of the greatest rock drummers. I mean, he's up there. He, he's very respected, yes. But to say he's one of the greatest, I don't know if I would agree with that. Uh, but he is definitely great, without question. Uh, his musicality and ability to play at a high level in any musical style have earned him the utmost respect in the music world. That is true. That is absolutely true. Uh, in 2009, Modern Drummer Magazine named Todd the number one rock drummer in the world. I did not know that. And three years ago, readers of the same magazine voted Todd the number one live drummer. Didn't know that either. Uh, while he has met the Foo Fighters in person, he's never heard the song Rope before this Drumeo challenge. For this segment, it's made clear to Todd beforehand that even though he is listening to the original version first, he is free if he wants to invent his own drum parts. Good, so they're giving him some creative freedom. That's good. This Drumio segment was recorded several months after the passing of Taylor Hawkins in 2022, who was the drummer of the Foo Fighters. Cool. Okay, so I'm just really quick, uh, just to make sure that I'm on the same page as everybody else. I have, I, I think I have the song in my head, but I'm not 100% sure. So 
I'm gonna go really quick, listen to the song, and make sure that it is the song I'm thinking of, and then we'll we'll continue this video. And we're back. Okay, so I listened to it. Uh, yes, it is. It is the song I was thinking of. But it, it was funny while I was listening to the song. I was like, I'm, I was hearing the guitar parts that jump, 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 jump. I was like, this. Okay, this sounds familiar. And the minute they came in with a, da 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 da, -da I was like, that's it. That that's that's all I needed to hear. I remember that and the ride pattern. I remember I really enjoyed the ride pattern. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. Um. Let's see how this goes. Let's see. This was posted by Drumio. Yes. Okay. And the video has 628,000 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the video description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right. Here we go. Todd Zuckerman hears rope for the first time and then attempts to recreate it on the drums. Having the ability to have some liberties, obviously. This is gonna be interesting. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. Okay. All right, so let's, I'm gonna do it right now. Right, let's do it right now. Okay. This is live in real time, but I'm just gonna play the song right now. Warts and all, and there's gonna be a lot of warts. Okay, Todd Zuckerman here at Drumeo, and I've been bullied and cajoled <laughs> into bullied. doing this exercise over a nice steak dinner. Um, <laughs> the exercise here is Todd learns a song on the fly that Primary. I haven't heard, and they picked one out for me, and I just looked over here and saw what it is. Uh, now, first off, the muscle is definitely atrophied for like learning a song and doing it on the fly. I'm not going to be entertaining because here's how I learn a song. Undivided attention. No comments, no dancing, nothing. That's how I learn a song. But even in, in, in sessions of old, you'd go in and you could hear a piece down as many times as you want. There might be charts. There might be a producer telling you certain things that they want. Yes. And it, in modern times, when I'm doing sessions from my house, I have all the time in the world to listen to stuff while I'm brushing my teeth, driving around, being on airplanes, being in hotel rooms, coming home, and then doing the session three weeks later. It's funny you mentioned airplanes. I have done several gigs uh, where I've been flown out you know, last minute and whatnot, and I'm literally learning the songs on the plane. I, I mean, listen, you got like four or five hours to kill, right? So you might as well <laughs> sit there with your in-ears in and listen to the song going, okay, 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 yeah, all right, that, yeah. And then you go out the plane and you go and you, you have a rehearsal and jump on the stage all in one day. It's happened. So I love that he mentioned that on planes, yes. Yes, on planes. So that's how I work. So now they're gonna put me to the test and it looks like it's a Foo Fighters song called Rope, right? Yep. Rope. All right, so um, I don't know the song, I don't think. I'm, I'm not a Foo aficionado, although I like those guys and I've met them and uh, met Taylor Hawkins uh, several times and he was always a lovely guy. So I guess I just press this button and we go right into it. Yes, sir. All right, we're gonna do it. Brandon says yes, all right. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying this video so far, and I just oh. wanted to take a second and let you know that we have every single Foo Fighters track transcribed for you inside of Drumeo, including the song Rope. You can access the sheet music, you nice. can slow down the parts, you can loop different sections, and there's just a bunch of practice tools to help you out. So if you wanna check that out, you can head over to drumeo.com by clicking the link below, and you can get a seven day free trial. Seven day free trial, yep. Give us a rope. 
work. I remember I loved the rifle work a lot when I did my reaction. This is no lie, I'm gonna play it right now with tons of mistakes. That's a great track. Um, thank you for turning me on to that one. That's a really great track. Uh, I, I'm definitely gonna mess up the intro because it's it's a little tricky with the time. No, can I not. just play the intro again, see if I can figure that out? If I go, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two. Three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two. Okay, I get that. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. The way he's counting there on the, yep, on the pulse. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Yep. So it's one, two. It's right on the downbeat of three. One, two. Yeah. All you gotta do is remember it's on the downbeat of three. It's it's eight. Da -da 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 -da. It's it should it should be pretty easy. Let's see if he hits it. I, I bet he nails it. I bet he nails the intro. He's worried about it. So he's gonna be really focused on it. So I'll bet you he nails it. So let's I'm gonna do it right now. Let's do it. Right? Let's do it right now. Let's do it. This is live in real time. Uh, my apologies to Foo Fighter fans and, and to my respects to Taylor on this one, but I'm just gonna play the song right now. Do warts it. and all, and there's gonna be a lot of warts. Forgetting that da 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 da, he keeps forgetting that part. But he's he's got one out of four uh, when it comes to that fill so far. So it's I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> Just love the look on his face when he realizes he's like, oh, I can't believe I forgot that. Oh man, I am so glad that he got the ride pattern. He got the ride pattern. I am so glad he caught on to that. Um, to me, that was one of the highlights of the song. When I reacted to it, I was that on, on the chorus was that ride pattern that, that Taylor Hawkins came up with, and I'm glad to see that that he uh, he nailed it. He really did nail it. Some nice fills from him too. I don't know, I don't know how accurate the fills have been when they transitions from phrase to phrase, but it sounds correct. Now whether it's 
one that he came up with on his own or it was the is exactly like the original i don't know but what he is playing has fit definitely fit um let's see what else he can do here Sounded good. During the guitar solo, I feel like he was a little more active than Taylor was. I, I don't know how accurate I am with that, but he sounds like he's being a lot more active than Taylor was during the guitar solo part. But if I'm being honest, I like what he did better. I, I really do. I, I like how he was filling in. Obviously, he's going to be louder in the mix, and that's an easy thing to fix in post-production. All they got to do is bring his levels down. But... uh you know, for the sake of recording, but I mean, it, it sounded really, what, not how loud he was playing, but what he was playing, the, the pattern he came up with, the fills he, he threw in there. Yeah, yeah, I dug him. I absolutely dug him. Let's, okay, he's probably gonna finish this out. Let, let's, let's let him finish this out and we'll uh, see where we go from there. Fun. Yeah. Want to do one more take from the top? No. no. So my process now it nope. feels weird that that landing on beat three feels jagged because you're playing snare on two and four. Yep. So one two three yep. four one, one two. two da -ga -da -ga -da -da. Yeah. Uh, that didn't feel natural to me. So that they would be something not. that I would key into because there's obviously a pattern uh, going on there. There's if a form. There uh, to it. The starts and stops, there's a, a little extra section there with a, a couple extra beats. Um, that chorus is very much has a Neil Peart ding 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 classic uh, feel there. Ding, 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 they're ding, definitely yeah, on the, on the uh, nodding their heads and bobbing their heads to that. Yep. But yeah, I mean, if I had to learn this to play for a show tonight, basically I would just listen to it and listen to it and play it. And that's how I learn um, with repetition. Mm -hmm. When I learn things, I never go into gigs with charts and cheat sheets unless it's imperative. Like I got called and I got to learn 20 songs by tonight. That doesn't happen to me anymore. So I, I, I want to learn Lucky the music you. so I'm in it, so I can be part of it with the band. And they're not relying on me and I'm not, I don't have my head down in charts and they're not cueing me for things. If, I, if I'm prepared, 
and I learn something cold, then I can come to the, the table and no one has to worry about me, no one has to cue, and we can all live the music in real time together. So yes. that would be my process. But this was a fun uh, experiment uh, to do, and I hope I did uh, did right by the, the Foos and the fans of the Foos and the legacy of Taylor. That's a very, very cool track, great drumming, great track. Yeah, those guys are undeniable. I should know this song. There's a lesson. I like what he said about charts versus no charts. He he's right. I mean, when you when you have to use charts, your nose is stuck in them quite often. And you know, for recording sessions, that's one thing. But when you're playing live, it's never good to have charts. It's I mean, I've done it in the past. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of fun because I don't get to move around the stage and stuff because I'm literally have to stand there and read the chart. So I. I completely agree with everything he said. Absolutely. Um, okay, let me get my thoughts together. I'll see you in the review, and we'll talk about it. Well, there you go, folks. That was Todd Zuckerman. Here's Rope for the first time, and then does his very best to play it on the drums. <laughs> this was a request from Charles B, and this was actually one of Charles B's three prioritized requests for the month of August for being a gold tier member on the Patreon page. So there you go, Charles. I hope you enjoyed the show, man. Um, that was fun. That that was, man, that brought me back to the Larnell Lewis reaction, man. I had so much fun with that reaction. I really did. To this day, one of the most fun reactions I had filming and watching it and just really kind of engaged with it and just, you know, relating to it in a lot of ways. Um, I, I had a blast with that reaction and this was equally fun. Um, watching him figure things out, watching him, uh, you know, play along, watching him make mistakes, proving that he's human, you know, absolutely. And watching his reaction, you realize he messed up, you know, the bleeps, and that was great. <laughs> uh, but I, I admit, I, there was so much going on in that video, uh, besides him playing. There was a lot of things that he said afterwards uh, that I honestly agree with 100%. Um, we're going to get to all of that, I promise. But I know everybody's dying to know what the score is. So let's get started with that. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that a 9.2. Yep, 9.2. You heard me. I didn't stutter. That is the score I feel this video deserves. Let me tell you why. Why? Remember, I'm not taking the original song into account here at all. I've, I've already done a reaction to that song. If you want to know what I thought about the song, you can go check out the reaction over here somewhere on the channel. I don't know exactly where it is, but it, it's here somewhere. I'm sure you can find it. Okay. Um. Todd Zuckerman. Uh, I, I gotta say, he... I, <laughs> He nailed like 90% of it, man. He did. I mean, he he absolutely nailed it, as far as I can tell. Uh, I mean, obviously he missed the 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 lead in, you know, did it a damper down. He missed that like out of like the eight times that it happened. He only hit he only nailed it like twice, I think. So he was only he was only batting 250 with that. But you know what? 250 in baseball. I mean, I I've seen guys make millions of dollars on 250. So. You know, it, 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 it's okay. It, it's okay. And like he said, you know, because the snares on the two and the four coming in on the three, it's a little awkward. It, it really is. Unless you're very comfortable with the song and you're very familiar with the song. Um, I'll be the first with it. When I, when I was listening to it for the for the second time, right before I did this reaction, uh, I went and listened to the song. I, I got to admit, man, the first time it hit, it threw me off. And I was like, what? Oh, oh, that's right. That's right. But after that, I was like, okay, I remember that now. But remember, I've done a reaction to it before. I've heard the song before. So he had it. So I get it. I absolutely get it. I mean, that it is a little awkward. It absolutely is. Um, but other than that, man, he nailed it for the most part. I don't know about the fill work. I don't know about the fill work. I don't know if he hit the fills exactly like Taylor Hawkins did. But the fills that Todd came up with, man, they were good. 
they were good, man. They were tasty fills. And I absolutely loved what he did with it. I don't know how accurate they were, but what he did sounded just fine to me. Um, the pattern he had in, during the guitar solo, I like the pattern he came up with. I just think personally, I think it might have been a little too active for what it was on the original album. I mean, because remember, it's a guitar solo. So I know he was probably just kind of showing off a little bit, and that's fine. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. It's his video. It's not the Foo Fighters video. It's his video. And I'm sure if he was ever called by the Foo Fighters to come in and play for them, I'm sure he would be, you know, a little more reserved when it came to that part because he doesn't want to bury the guitar solo. But because this is his video, he took some liberties. I don't care. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I was thrilled that he, he, he clicked on to that ride pattern. And when he said that Neil Pert ride pattern, I was like, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of that in my reaction? Because he's absolutely right. That Neil Peart ride pattern. If you think about all of these songs that Rush has done, where you would hear that ride pattern come in, uh, you know, like the trees, Red Barchetta. Um, gosh, what else? Um, you can't have something for nothing. I mean, that song, uh, 2112, it's used a lot. I mean, a lot. My, my personal favorite song from Rush. Uh, Limelight. There's another one where the ride is very prominent. I mean, there, it's such a Neil Peart thing. I didn't think about that. And then the minute, not even the minute, the second that he said that, I was like, I can't believe I didn't catch that. I can't believe I didn't think of that. So good on him for, for pointing that out. Everything he said in regards to learning a song, I absolutely 100% agree with. And actually, I, I follow a lot of the same things that he does. I like it when bands are able to send me charts. Don't get me wrong. I like charts. I do. But if you're going to send me charts, send me charts. Seriously, like, give me like two or three weeks advance notice. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to have to rely on the charts when we're actually playing live. I don't want to sit there with charts in my face on a music stand and I'm standing there playing, reading the notes, you know, during the live show. I like having charts for the purpose of learning the song. That way, if there's important parts I need to get, like signature lines, that the bass player in the band I'm subbing for, he he plays these lines and they're a signature part of the song. Yeah, I'm gonna wanna get those right. So charts are a nice thing to have and they help a lot. Um, but when you're on stage playing live, they're the last thing you want. Unless you're, you know, like in an orchestra or something like that and you're, you're in the back, you know, where nobody can see you, then that's fine. But I, I agree with him. You know, you don't wanna have your nose stuck in the charts when you're playing live trying to put on a show because it's not going to look very good. Studio is different. You know, when you're when you sit down in a studio, no one's going to see you. No one's going to see what you're going to do. So having the charts in studio. Yeah, of course, you're going to have charts in studio, especially if you're sight reading. Um, but I'm very much like him. I, I will listen to the song over and over and over and over again. And it's funny you mentioned the plane because I, there, there have been times. There have been times where I've, I've gotten last minute calls. How fast can you get on a plane? We need you here by tomorrow night, you know? And I'm like, oh, great, here's my rate <laughs> for last minute gigs. The rate is significantly higher, uh, but I'll jump on the plane, they'll, they'll send me the MP3s. If they can send me isolated tracks, it's even better. So I can hear the, the bass line really well. And then uh, I'll just be listening to it the whole plane flight, no joke. I'll be sitting there going over and over and over and over and over in my head, listening to it over and over and over again until it becomes second nature. Um, and I, I yeah, that active listening, man, it really does help. It does help. If you're able to do that, it helps a lot when it comes to learning tracks. So everything he said, I agree with 100%. He was absolutely spot on. And I'm the exact same way, believe it or not. So yeah, 9.2. I feel really good with that score. I think that score is absolutely deserved. Um, if I remember correctly, I gave Larnell Lewis a 9.0. The number one reason why I'm giving this a little bit higher is this is a significantly more difficult song to play than Enter Sandman is. I'm sorry, Enter Sandman is a much easier song to play than Rope is. Rope's a far more intricate song. So, And considering how much he nailed it, I, I got to give him the 9.2. I got to give it to him. So 9.2, that's where we're at, and that's where we're going to stay. So 9.2, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully I was able to entertain you. 
If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you guys feel like joining the fan base, go ahead and click on that button down there. If you guys want to like the video, go ahead and like the video. If you guys want to ring the bell, go ahead and ring the bell. It honestly doesn't make any difference at all to me, but if you guys feel like doing these things, then by all means, feel free to do so. Well, that's going to do it for the night, folks. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.